Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are going to talk about all of the series that I will not be finishing. So I recently made a video of all of the series that I'm currently in the middle of, a series that I do plan on continuing to completion, regardless of how long that takes. So I wanted to go ahead and make a follow-up video of all of the series that I will not be completing. Now there are a couple of caveats, because if I were to list absolutely every single book series that I've started and not finished, we would be here for days, especially if I went back as far as 2012, which is when I started tracking my reading on Goodreads. Now I didn't start seriously tracking my reading on Goodreads until about 2016, 2017. So caveat number one is I'm not going back as far as 2012. I am only going to be talking about the series that I've started and DNF'd since I started seriously tracking my reading on Goodreads in that 2016-2017 timeline. Additionally, I'm only going to be mentioning series here that I started with the intention of continuing but have since made the decision to stop. What do I mean by that? There are plenty of times when I have read the first book in a series and either A didn't know it was a series or I read it because it was like a book club select. So if I read the first book in a series as a book club selection, I didn't necessarily pick it up with the intention of continuing with it as a series. I did it because it was a book club pick and I wanted to be part of the group discussion. I thought I would give it a try and whether or not it worked out, that's anybody's guess. If I did end up picking the first book in a series for say a book club selection, really enjoyed it, did make the decision to continue and then ultimately DNF'd it, I will go ahead and mention those here because those were series that I did decide to continue and then officially DNF. On a similar note, I will not really be mentioning series here that were not series at the time that I started the book. So there was maybe one book, it was supposed to be a standalone and then the author decided to go ahead and continue with it. I'm not really going to be discussing those here because at the time I read the book I didn't know it was a series and perhaps time passed and I was like I don't really feel the need to continue with these books in the series. I am only going to be talking about series that I actively knew were series, I had plans to continue, and just DNF. So now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. And these are definitely in no particular order. They are just going to be in the order as I wrote them down. So the first series I have written down here is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I believe that's part of the Chaos Walking series or trilogy. I read this back in 2016 when I was still really very new to fantasy books. At that time I still wasn't even sure I was a fan of fantasy and this was also before I discovered audiobooks as my preferred medium. So this book had a lot of disadvantages going in when I read it and I remember just not really enjoying my reading experience and not really understanding my reading experience. But again I was very new to books like this. If I remember correctly this book is set in a world where there are no women and all of the men can read each other's thoughts. I don't really remember much more about that. I do remember something awful happened to the dog in this which I did not appreciate but this was just a situation where I didn't really understand or enjoy my reading experience and so I decided not to continue. Now if I had read that today or read that further in my journey of fantasy sci-fi dystopian stories would I like it better? Possibly but I will never know because I will not be continuing with that series. Next I have Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. So this is a contemporary series by Jojo Moyes and I remember really enjoying Me Before You. I still have it on my shelves. I still think about it. I thought that it was a beautiful story although I know people have some problems with it. The thing about this is I don't really believe it needed any further stories. So it follows the main character of that book, Amelia I think her name might have been, after the events of book one. But I feel like book one on its own was complete and didn't require any other books. Now would the other books still possibly be enjoyable? Sure. But do I feel the need to read them? No, so I'm not going to. I have also DNF'd and will not be continuing in the Mortal Instruments or any other Cassandra Clare books in the future. I read City of Bones many many years ago with the full intention of continuing because I remember enjoying my reading experience of that for the most part and then I got to book two and I DNF'd it. I just couldn't do it. I got a certain way. I was bored. I didn't care. I didn't really like the direction it was headed. I thought the thing between Jace and Clary was really weird and I didn't enjoy it so I decided not to continue. The Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton is also one I will not be continuing. I read I think the first three or four books in the series which follows Anita Blake who is of course a vampire hunter and all of the characters that she encounters in her line of work and for the most part I remember liking the first few okay but I don't really feel the need to continue and I've heard that as the series goes on it's definitely in books 20 plus at this point but I've heard as the series goes on it just kind of gets to be like smut and that's it. I don't know if that's true but that's just what I've heard and that's not really what I'm interested in. I really want a lot of the paranormal aspects of it not just the romance or the sex part of it and so it just doesn't really intrigue me enough to continue so I'm not going to. I'm also going to include the Jack Reacher books here. I did read books one and two and I enjoyed them enough but this is a series where it is so long and ongoing and all of the books I feel like they're just going to be the same and that they're going to run together. There are some series that I'm continuing that are like that so 
I don't necessarily mind the fact that it's a very long series and some of the books like they're going to be the same or it's going to be hard to differentiate them but I didn't love these enough to invest my time in that way and so because of that I won't be continuing with the Jack Reacher series by Lee Child. I also have the Legend trilogy by Marie Lu that is like a young adult dystopian series and I read the first book and just didn't really like it all that much. It didn't really leave much of a lasting impression and so I don't feel the need to continue. Also the Simon Verse by Becky Albertalli. Those are pretty much companion novels. You don't really have to read them in particular order. They are basically standalones. I determined pretty easily that Becky Albertalli is not an author for me. I didn't really enjoy Simon versus the Homo Sabian's Agenda or The Upside of Unrequited as much as everybody else seemed to. I didn't really like Becky Albertalli's writing. I didn't love her obsession with including pop culture references throughout her stories. And I also hated the book that she co-wrote with Adam Silvera, What If It's Us. Oh my gosh, it was awful. So Becky Albertalli is just not for me. I will not be continuing in her Simon verse and I will not be continuing with her as an author in general. I have the Conspiracy of Us trilogy by Maggie Hall. Now this is a fun series. It's kind of a cross between The Da Vinci Code and National Treasure for young adults and those are like buzzwords for me because National Treasure, those movies are some of my favorite movies of all time. I just love history so much. I love the adventure. It's very like Indiana Jones-esque in a type of way. I also love Baby Nicolas Cage. Oh, love him so much. So I read the very first book Conspiracy of Us and I enjoyed it. It was a really really good time. I have nothing against that series whatsoever. This is just a situation where I am moving away from young adult and there are so many other books that I want to read more than this series and so I don't really want to invest any more time in it. That is that is all. I really don't have anything negative to say about it. It's just not in the direction that I'm headed towards. Then I have Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. Now this is actually one that I'm not set on DNFing. I read the very first book in this series. It is a suspense thriller series where you're following a woman who finds out that her husband was a serial killer and the first book is following what happens as she's trying to protect her kids and what happens when like copycat crimes are happening and people are kind of looking at her suspicious because they don't really think that she could have been blind to what her husband was doing so she's kind of outcast and then things are coming after her and her children and I just don't remember loving it. I gave it a three stars but this might be one that I would be willing to go back and try again. If you have read the series and enjoy it please let me know down below if you think that I should give it a try given what you know about my love of suspense thrillers and mysteries and all of that good stuff. This was just one that didn't really do it for me at the time and I don't know if it would be worth going back and rereading. Next I have a handful of Victoria V.E. Schwab series. I will not be continuing in the Darker Shades of Magic series. This is another series that fell victim to the fact that when I read it I was still very new to the fantasy genre. I was still having a lot of concentration issues trying to read physically. I hadn't really figured out what worked for me. I don't remember hardly anything about that book. I just remember not being super impressed by it. I had every intention of continuing but it has been like five years since I read that first book. I would absolutely need to go back and reread it or read a very in-depth synopsis about what happened and I just don't care to. This is another situation where if I read it today I might feel differently and I might want to continue absolutely but that is just not where I am at this point and I don't feel the need to go back and try to continue it. I also likely won't be continuing in the archives which I think is a duology. I read the first one. It was okay. It didn't really do a whole lot for me so I don't feel the need to continue. City of Ghosts is a middle grade series and I enjoyed the first one enough. Like it was very atmospheric. It was very spooky. It was perfect for the Halloween type of year especially as it follows a young girl who can see and talk to ghosts. So the atmosphere was absolutely there. I am just not a really big middle grade reader and it would take a lot for me to really want to continue in a middle grade series. And so that's why I'm not continuing really nothing against it overall. It's just not for me. I also likely will not be continuing in the Vicious and Vengeful duology. I read Vicious and I remember liking it for the most part, but again, I really don't remember a whole ton about it. I don't remember it blowing me away like it did everybody else. I would absolutely have to revisit it in some form or fashion. I have Vengeful on my shelves, but I think I'm going to unhaul both of them. I haven't made a firm decision on that, but at this point, that is where I'm leaning. I won't be continuing with The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Now, in all fairness, when I read this book, I don't believe it was a series and I don't think I knew that it was going to be a series, so I don't necessarily need to include it here. But I didn't love the first one enough. I really enjoyed the first half of the book, but the second half really lost me because it got very abstract and weird and too fairy tale ish And that's not really my vibe. And so I don't think I'm going to be continuing with that. Another one that I won't be continuing with, and this is probably going to be another unpopular opinion, is the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown. I was so excited to read that book and I just read it and remember being very disappointed. It was not what I was expecting it to be. This is a futuristic sci-fi dystopian type series where you're following our main character as he's trying to infiltrate the elite members of society as a revenge for what happened to his wife. But a lot of the book was just like this really big, I don't know, like war game or capture the flag type game. I don't really remember a lot of the details. It just didn't work for me and it wasn't what I was expecting and I didn't 
didn't love it and so that was an easy one to consider not continuing with. Daughter of the Pirate King duology by Trisha Levenseller. There was Daughter of the Pirate King and then Daughter of the Siren Queen. I really liked Daughter of the Pirate King. It was such a fun good time and that's why I wanted to continue but this is just another book that's falling victim to the fact that I'm moving away from YA and there are so many other series that I want to spend my time with and this is not it. So I do still have Daughter of the Pirate King and I will keep that on my shelves because it was a very much an enjoyable reading experience but I don't feel the need to continue with it any further. I also will not be continuing the Children of Blood and Bone series by Tony Adeyemi. This again was read during a time when I was still getting my feet wet with fantasy. I don't remember anything that happened in the story. I don't even really remember enjoying it all that much. This is another one where I don't feel the need to revisit or reread to continue in this series especially as it is YA. I'm just going to go ahead and move on. Another book that I didn't know was a series or was going to be a series but I will include it here is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. This was such a fun Cinderella retelling. It's set at a comic-con and it was just so much fun. I really enjoyed my reading experience of this. Again I have nothing against this series. I have really positive feelings about Geekerella and I did have intentions on moving on but this is just one where I no longer feel the need to spend my time with it. I had great memories of Geekerella. That's all that I really need and so I will not be continuing. Next I have The Darkest Mind series by Alexandra Bracken. I'm pretty sure that I picked this one up as part of a book club selection and I enjoyed it to the point where I was considering reading it. Again this is another YA series. It is a dystopian type series. It wasn't mind-blowing or miraculous or anything completely unique or inventive and as time passed and I moved away from it this is just one that I don't have any interest in continuing. I also will not be continuing with the Lady Janie series by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. That book though was so 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 much fun. This is a series of historical retellings with fantastical twists. So there are very much a lot of liberty taken with these stories. They are not meant to be historically accurate in any way shape or form. The humor in My Lady Jane was so fantastic. It was really great. This is another one that I had a lot of fun with. I really did and that's what made me want to continue in the series. But again when I think about like continuing it's not what I want. It's not what I'm in the mood for. It's not something that I'm looking forward to and I feel like I just need to trust my instincts on this one and let it go. Another popular one that I'm not going to be continuing with is An Ember in the Ashes series by Sabah Tahir. I read the first one. It was okay. I really liked the second one a lot better. This is another YA fantasy that has kind of some dystopian type vibes to it as well but this is another series where I was looking at it and I was thinking about continuing and I didn't want to. Like I wasn't excited to continue. I didn't want to waste my energy on this series and so I made the decision to go ahead and let it go. Another one I don't think I'm going to be continuing is the Serpent and Dove series. This is one that I did read as part of a book club but after I read it I fully intended on continuing with it and I just don't think I'm going to. Another YA series that was a really good time while I was reading it but as time has gone on there's just nothing propelling me to continue with the series and I feel like if I'm looking at the series and thinking about having to read the next books and I just don't want to I think that's important to acknowledge and just to move on from. Life is too short to continue a series that you're really not excited about. There are already a handful of series on my shelves that I have like one book left in the series and I'm continuing even though I'm not necessarily excited to do so because I've invested so much time and energy into the series already and I want to go ahead and complete it and see how it resolves itself and I didn't want to keep series on my shelves where there were more than one book left like two three four books that I was already not excited about reading. I feel like if there are still that many books left in a series and my feelings about continuing are more of anxiety and stress and not excitement then it's time to let them go. I also will not be continuing with the Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. These are fun science fiction novels and I read the first one. It's kind of told in interview like format and it follows these people who have found these giant robot like pieces all over the world and the studying that goes on and the testing and so on and I remember liking the first book enough but I don't remember anything about it and I have no pull to continue in the series and so I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. I will also not be continuing with the Dublin Murder Squad by Tana French. I read Into the Woods, oh I can't remember was it this year? No it was last year I think and I hated that book. I didn't like it at all. There were a lot of problems that I had with it. I didn't really like the writing style, didn't really like the characters and so my distaste for that book was so great that I immediately was like nope we're not continuing in this series. I also read the first book in the Half a King series by Joe Abercrombie because I had heard so many amazing things about it and Joe Abercrombie as an author in general but I found Half a King to be very very boring. It was an adult fantasy that didn't really hold my attention at all and so I don't really want to continue. I wouldn't mind reading more from Joe Abercrombie just because I have heard amazing things and I believe it's his first law trilogy that gets so much hype so I would be willing to read more from him just Half a King didn't really work for me. I also have two series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes that I will not be continuing with The Naturals and The Fixer. Jennifer Lynn Barnes is actually a pretty popular YA author especially with her release of The Inheritance Games. Those books have gotten a lot of hype but because of my past experience with her I read the first book in the Fixer duology. I read the first book in the Natural series and I also read one of her standalones and none
none of them impressed me. I think I gave all of them three stars and I have since forgotten all of the details of these books. And because of that, I just don't feel like I want to continue in these series or with her as an author, although I'm really tempted because of how hyped the Inheritance games are. I think the Inheritance games might be getting an adaptation, which I would probably be more likely to watch than read those books just because of my past experience with her. But I definitely will not be continuing with those two YA series in the future. I also have two Jennifer L. Armentrout series I will not be continuing. I will not be continuing in Lux and Wicked. Jennifer L. Armentrout is a very prolific author. She's a very popular author in the online bookish community and I wanted to give her a try and she has so many series on her backlist. So I gave Lux a try and I actually found it pretty interesting and pretty engaging and I was enjoying myself. I think I liked the Wicked, the first book in the Wicked series a bit more and I fully planned on continuing but then when I went to read the second book in the Lux series I just didn't care. There was like this huge shift in me where I just had no more interest in YA whatsoever. It was like my brain is like you can't do this anymore. You want more in your books than what the YA genre age range is giving you and so you need to move on and so I am going to go ahead and just not read any more of JLA's young adult novels. Um, I also tried to read her from Blood and Ash series and I got like 50 pages in and it just wasn't doing it for me. I don't know if I just didn't give it more of a shot but I really don't have any interest in reading or continuing with that series either. So JLA just might not be an author for me. I am not really sure but I definitely will not be continuing with the Lux and the Wicked series. Another super popular one that I will not be continuing with is the Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. That series blew up and everybody seems to love it immensely. They hold it in the highest regard and I didn't. I was bored through a lot of it, didn't really connect to the characters, didn't really like the main character at all, didn't really like a lot of the decisions that she was making or her attitude about a lot of things. And it just didn't work for me. And even though I had the entire set, I had the entire set in these beautiful Illumicrate exclusive editions, it wasn't enough to make me want to continue. I didn't love the book enough and so I went ahead and sold that set and I'm sure that somebody else is loving it a lot more than I was ever going to be able to. Another series that I started that was really fun and I was for the most part enjoying myself was the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. Now these are older novels. I think they were written in the late 90s early 2000s but I had heard a lot about them I think from Chelsea from Chelsea Dulling Reads. They're very short books. I think like each book is like a hundred plus pages and then it just keeps moving on in the series and I read the first two and it was fine but it was just such dated YA and it was one of those situations where I'm thinking about it I was like do I really like it enough to continue am I really invested in the series enough to continue and the answer is no so I went ahead and sold those as well. The Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson is another one I will not be continuing. I read Truly Devious and I was very underwhelmed by it. I was very bored by it. I think I gave it three stars. I remember absolutely nothing about it. I was not as amazed and intrigued by that book as the rest of the bookish community seemed to be and that series continues to go like keeps going. I think it was supposed to end maybe after like book three or something and then it just keeps on going and I will not be continuing in that one. The Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs is one that I will not be continuing. Mercy Thompson is a shapeshifter. She can shapeshift into a coyote fox like figure and it's really about like her and her relationships with some of like the people in her lives primarily werewolves but there's a vampire in there as well and her relationships with them and I read the first two books in that series I think and I enjoyed them for the most part but this is another series that is ongoing Going and it's getting pretty lengthy at this point I believe and as much as I enjoyed my reading experience of the first two it's another one where I didn't enjoy it enough to invest more time and energy. I didn't love them enough and I don't look forward to them enough to continue. So like I said if my feelings about the books are not excitement at continuing I just don't feel like I need to continue so that's why Mercy Thompson is not going to be continuing. I also don't think I'm going to be continuing in the Cormoran Strike series by Robert Galbraith aka JK Rowling. I read the first book in that and it was just it was not really what I wanted. I seem to have a thing about British detective fiction. It really just doesn't work for me for the most part. There's just something about the way that they are written that really doesn't click with me. Some have worked for me in the past but for the most part they don't click. It's just like the writing style, the way that the characters are written. It's very detached in my opinion and I just don't like them. I don't really remember anything about the first book that I read in that series and it wasn't all that long ago that I read it. It didn't impress me. It didn't wow me. It felt very tedious and complicated at points and I just didn't connect with any of the characters, especially the main character. I was very detached from it from the entirety of the time that I was reading it and because of that I just don't feel the need to continue. And I think the very last series that I'm going to talk about here is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. This series gets a lot of hype here in the online bookish community. It is a very atmospheric series based on, I think it's Russian mythology. And this is just an instance where the books are not for me. I thought that they were, you know, I remember reading the first book and thinking that it was okay. It was pretty magical, but I did feel kind of lost and confused through a lot of it. That's probably because I did listen to it on audiobook, but I feel like it was better for me to listen to it on audio because of all of the pronunciations and translations that were included in that book. But this is definitely a situation where like I would not be looking forward to continuing that series. And so I have already unhauled my set of those books. 
All right, y'all. So those are all the series that I will not be continuing. Again, those are not nearly all of the series that I have started and stopped. There are just so, so, so many other book series that I have started, like not knowing that they were series or maybe they weren't series at the time, or I just read the first book as part of a book club and just wasn't for me and I was never going to continue anyway. So I did not include those here. This list would have been much, much longer if I had, but I still hope that you found this interesting. I am sure that I have some unpopular opinions here. So please feel free to let me know about that down below. Please let me know some of the series that you have decided to DNF. I'm sure that there are some of my favorites out there that you have decided to DNF and that's okay. We are all different with all different preferences. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.